Welcome to another Affinity Photo tutorial. Um, I had a request from one of my viewers, uh, Dandy193, and his question was, can you make a wireframe globe that you can overlay uh, a world map on? You Usually this is done in a vector program, so I said, you know, I'm going to give it a try and see how well it'll come out in Affinity Photo. So let's give it a shot and see what happens. This is what we're going to be recreating right here. So we'll start off with a new file. And let's go ahead and make that 1920 by 1080. Zoom out a little bit there. And uh, let's bring in some guides so that we have something to snap to. And horizontally. All right, so the very first thing we're going to do is create the, uh, the outer sphere. So let's come over here to our ellipse tool. And we're going to make sure that the fill is white for right now. And we'll take the stroke and set it to 2 pixels. And then coming in here, we'll make sure that we have snap enabled. We'll come into the center of our image, let it snap there. We're going to hold Command and Shift. And we're just going to drag out our sphere. We're going to make it big. All right. So now we're going to manually create the uh, longitudinal lines there. So we're going to come over to our pen tool. And we're going to leave the stroke at 2, but we're going to make the fill invisible. And we're going to start up here at the very top. Let it snap into the center of the top. Click. Then we're going to come over to here not too far out of the way there and start to drag down and then we'll hold shift so that we get a nice straight drag and then we'll just finish it down here at the bottom so that's our first longitudinal line and now what we can do is we can just uh, command J copy that hold down shift and we'll move it over some now for the longitudinal lines like this we're gonna resize them and shape them a slightly different way so let's come over to our pen tool now and get the node selector and we'll grab this top node here drag it into where it's almost even with the top because these lines would all converge to a center pole either north or south and then we can take and drag this out just a little bit all right so there's our first one and we'll go command J bring this one over maybe not quite as far because we're trying to mimic the curvature of the uh, sphere Again, we're going to move this one over and then Command J again. Let's move it over. Node tool. And we'll do one more just to uh, really give it that curvature effect. And finally, the node tool. And as you can see here, if we zoom in, you can see that some of these are uh, not quite meeting up. So if we just zoom in here down at the bottom, we can clean this up a little bit here and grab this one, bring that up some, and then come up to the top. Same thing, grab this one, bring it down, and then we can zoom out again. So we've got one side done here. So now let's go ahead and group these together. Take all those curves and group them together. And we'll duplicate that group, Command J, and then we'll come up to Arrange. And we will flip those horizontally. And then we're just going to hold shift and drag them on over. And if we zoom out a little bit, we can see what we've got here. We are kind of missing this center line here. So let's go ahead and put one of those in as well. Uh, come back to the pen tool. This is just going to be a straight line going from the top to the bottom. All right, so there's our longitudinal line. So now we need to make our uh, latitude lines. This is going to be done a little bit differently. It'll be a little easier. So let's start off with our first one. We'll come back to the pen tool, we'll come over here, click, over here, click and drag, and we'll use the shift tool to give us a nice straight line, and then we'll just finish it off right there. So now we're going to command J this, and we'll bring it down. And what's nice about this part here now is that we can just take and hold shift, or I'm sorry, command and option, and just drag in, and it will symmetrically do both sides. So we can go Command J again, that'll bring it down, and again, or Command and Option, again, Command J, Command and Option, Command J, and we're going to move this one up a little bit. So we're going to bunch these last two up a little bit more. Command and Option, drag that in so it's right on the border, and then one more, Command J, and we will move that one up, and then Command and Option, it in. All right, so there we go. We've got our 
uh, latitude lines there. So we're going to do the same thing here. We're going to grab these latitude lines and we're going to group them. And then we're going to duplicate that group, Command J. We will flip those vertically and then we're just going to move them on up. And we may have to do a little bit of adjusting here. Eh, probably not. We can probably just eyeball it again. This isn't going to be as accurate as a, uh, as a vector program. So let's go ahead and get rid of our guides for right now. We don't need to see those anymore. And now we need to put our, uh, our Earth on here. But before we do that, let's come to our original ellipse here. And for some reason, we lost the white fill on that. So let's go ahead and add a white fill to that because we're going to need that for a selection tool. All right, now we're going to put in our uh, world map. So I did a quick screen grab of like a black and white world map. We'll go to place. And I believe I have this somewhere. Here we go. World map. And we're just going to get and drag this out kind of like that. Let's go ahead and bring the opacity down just a little bit so we can see through it and we can kind of move it where we want it. Let's use the North America, South America. We'll just bring those in there like that and we'll bring the opacity back up to 100%. Now we do need to rasterize and trim this layer because we need to get rid of this white. So what we'll do here is we'll go to select, select sampled color. We'll select white. We'll apply that and then we're going to hit delete and then command D to deselect. All right, so now we've got all this extra stuff over here that we really don't want. So with the map still selected, let's come down to our ellipse and we'll command click on our ellipse since it does have a white fill. It's selecting the fill and the stroke. We'll invert that and then all we have to do is hit delete again. And we've got rid of the rest of the map. Command D, deselect. And so what we can do now uh, to sell it even further, we can kind of distort the map a little bit here. So let's, uh, let's go to filters and distort and pinch and punch. And let's drag the radius of the pick, uh, pinch and punch all the way up. And then we will drag this up to get kind of a distorted look like that. And we'll apply that. And then we're just going to scale that down a little bit and bring it back up into here. We have a little artifact there, I see. So let's grab the eraser tool and we'll just get rid of that artifact. And um, there you go. That's the basic effect. And then what I did is came down to the ellipse. I finally got rid of the fill so that we could see through the grid. Let's add in a blank pixel layer, bring it to the bottom of the stack, reset our colors, and let's put a gradient on this. And I made the upper outer color like a blue, dark blue, and made the center a lighter blue. And we'll go with a, a radial gradient on that. That looks pretty good right there. And then what I did with the uh, all the grids, let's group all these lines together and the ellipse. We'll group those. Went into layer effects on that and started off with a color overlay and made the color overlay white. I did add an outer glow to that and I made the outer glow like a lightish blue. Put the radius up quite a bit on that. And then I did add a bevel and emboss to that. If you want, you can do that. Uh, then what I did with the map is I rasterize and trim that. Then I came down to layer effects. I gave it uh, an outline and made the outline white. Go to the inside and bring the radius up to about one pixel. Did give it a color overlay. And so there you go. That's a pretty easy hack to get a wireframe model going. Uh, again, it's never going to be completely accurate, but if you're just trying to make a graphic for a web page or a banner or a document, this would be a, a quick down and dirty way to do it inside of Affinity Photo. Uh, if you enjoyed that, please hit the like button or think about subscribing to my channel. And until next time, peace. Talk to you later. Bye.